In California, you're supposed to stop for a pedestrian at a crosswalk. And in a recent study, some 90% of drivers did, except for those driving luxury cars, like this BMW. They were almost as likely to run the intersection as wait for the person to cross the street. Drivers of those BMWs, those Porsches, those Mercedes, were anywhere from three to four times more likely to break the law than drivers of less expensive, low-status cars. In a country more and more polarized by inequality, UCAL Berkeley's Paul Piff led a series of startling studies showing an apparent link between wealth and, well, unseemly behavior. Um, oh, by the way, there's candy there. It's actually for um, children for another study, but you know, you're welcome to take a few pieces if you want to. Okay. Thank you. That's the script an experimenter recited to every subject. And the results? Wealthier participants took two times as much candy from children as did poor participants. Another experiment tested honesty in reporting dice scores when cash was on the line. People all the way at the top who made $150,000, $200,000 a year were actually cheating four times as much as someone all the way at the bottom who made under $15,000 a year just to win credits for a $50 cash prize. So, experimental evidence that rich people are more likely to break the law while driving, help themselves to candy meant for children, cheat in a game of chance, also to lie during negotiations, and endorse unethical behavior, including stealing at work. The academic paper that resulted made headlines everywhere. The Wall Street Journal article leading with the question, ready the pitchforks? It is very clear that this study of social class touched a nerve. Psychology professor Dacker Keltner is Paul Piff's boss and co-author. We publish these studies in relatively obscure scientific journals and literally the next day we're getting hundreds of emails from around the world and a lot quite hostile. I've gotten uh, a lot of vitriol and hate mail from people calling me out for junk science and having a liberal agenda. Hey, but wait. Didn't those who complained have a point? That the research was done at a famously, some might say infamously, liberal university. Hey, they're in Berkeley. What other results did you expect them to get? I regularly hear the Berkeley idiot scientist who's finding what they expect to find. Let me tell you, we did not expect to find this. Our findings apply to both liberals and conservatives. It doesn't matter who you are. If you're wealthy, you're more likely to show these patterns of results. Results consistent across 30 studies he's run on thousands of people all over the United States. So what is it about wealth that might make people behave differently? What are we doing here? We're playing a, a game of monopoly that's rigged. This game is typical of another kind of experiment Piff likes to run. Instead of studying actual rich people, Piff gets subjects to feel rich in the lab. The designated Monopoly money bags starts with a few legs up. $2,000 versus the poor man's $1,000. An upscale playing piece, the rolls, versus an old shoe. The right to toss two dice instead of just one. Two, I've got snake eyes. I'm on a Meaning I assigned the role of rich person get an extra turn. Uh, so, but I roll again, because I've got... Yep, because you rolled doubles. doubles. Uh, six, so one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's Tennessee Avenue, and of course I'll buy that. Meanwhile, poor Paul Piff. I only get to roll one die, and as it says here, when I pass go, I collect a lower salary. I collect $100. Here's your one die. Great, thanks so much. Yeah, sure. I can't roll doubles. I don't get opportunities to move very far along oh, the board. True. Piff has run this experiment with hundreds of people on the Berkeley campus. The rich players are determined randomly by coin toss, the game rigged so they cannot lose. And yet, says Piff, despite their presumably liberal bent going in, when we ask them afterwards, how much do you feel like you deserved to win the game? The rich people felt entitled. They felt like they deserved to win the game. And that's a really incredible insight into what the mind does to make sense of advantage or disadvantage. So even though a subject like myself is just play acting, you consistently find that I begin to attribute success 
to myself, even though it's a coin flip that got me on this side of the board as opposed to that. You, like a real rich person, start to attribute success to your own individual skills and talents, and you become less attuned to all of the other things that contributed to you being in the position that you're in. How is the American dream achieved? HIF is part of a team headed by Dacker Keltner that studies the psychological effects of both absolute and relative poverty and wealth. We can also ask, do people believe in this dream? What they're studying is economic inequality, which as our viewers probably know, is as high as it's been in almost a century in this country. There are new data coming out on a daily basis from top laboratories showing no matter how you look at it, the effects of inequality are pernicious upon things like bullying on school playgrounds, the quality of your physical health, how you handle disease. What's somewhat surprising, says Keltner, is that even the haves suffer. One of the things that Wealth and Money does is it comes with a set of values and, a, and if you want a deeper ideology, and one of them is generosity is for suckers, right? And it's greed is good. Uh, but it turns out there are a lot of new data that show if, you, if you're generous and charitable and altruistic, you'll live longer, you'll feel more fulfilled, you'll feel more expressive of who you are as a person, you probably will feel more control and freedom in your life. Of course, there are plenty of wildly generous rich folks. Just look at the growing list of billionaires who've pledged to give the bulk of their fortunes to charity. And six, I got a doubles again. But One, statistically two, three, four, speaking, five, there's a significant tendency to look out for number one if you're at the top. Yeah, what do I got? Oh, you got a get out of jail free card. Oh, excellent. That's very nice. Uh, although I could probably, given the fact that I'm the rich person, get bailed out. You could. And as Piff observed when he ran this experiment with hundreds of doggedly friendly Berkeley types, one, two, Those in the role four, of top five, dog six, seven, began eight. to bark like one. And so I get the $200. Yeah, for you get 200 bucks. Well, give me 140 because I'm going to buy Mediterranean. Okay, done. Now listen to the way that you just spoke to me. It was very directive, you know, almost like a demand. But we found consistently with people who were the rich players that they actually started to become, in their behavior, as if, as if they were like rich people in real life. They were more likely to eat from a bowl of pretzels that we positioned off to the side. They ate with their mouths full, so they were a little ruder in their behavior to the other person. While I was thanking God no pretzels were present, Piff continued. Those arbitrarily assigned the role of low dog became more nearly man's best friend. If I take someone who's rich and make them feel psychologically a little less well off, they become way more generous, way more charitable way more likely to offer help to another person. So when people are playing this Monopoly game and they're in the poor person role that you're playing, they, if they were rich in real life, become more understanding, more compassionate? Not just in this game of Monopoly, but in a whole bunch of other experiments that we've run where we make rich people feel poor or poor people feel rich, you find the same kinds of differences. Differences that could conceivably help people understand their subconscious biases and perhaps even moderate the costly effects of economic inequality. But until that happens, we'd suggest you look both ways before crossing.